So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the MedTech stage at Deep Tech Atelier in Riga. It's already three o'clock in the afternoon and we are starting another discussion. And the topic is uh, Norway grants, welfare technologies for an inclusive society. This is, I must admit, something really, really new and, uh, and, and uh, unknown for me. Uh, because if we are talking about uh, healthcare technologies or medical technologies, that's more or less uh, fine with me because that's everything we are talking about um, here today. But welfare technologies, I'd be happy to know uh, what is hidden uh, behind uh, this uh, term and I really hope to find it out. But what's the background uh, for this uh, discussion? Uh, the Latvian Agency of Investments and Development is implementing business development program within Norway grants. And this program uh, uh, will support small and medium-sized enterprises in different areas, uh, including also welfare uh, technologies. And uh, that's, that's why we are talking about it. And I kindly ask all of you who might be interested to check out the uh, expo uh, boxes uh, on, the, on, on, on the platform and also to visit the stand of um, Norwegian Financial Mechanism, the expo stand of Norwegian Financial Mechanism, and uh, you can get definitely more detailed information about um, welfare technologies and the financial program which is going to support, uh, uh, to support it, and you can receive all kinds of consultations also uh, right now and right today. So, I have three fantastic companions uh, now and let's start uh, to introduce them and I will start um, with Dr. Uh, Wolfgang Leister. Uh, Dr. Wolfgang Leister is the research director at uh, Norwegian Computing Center um, in the Department of ICT Research and uh, Dr. Leister's uh, research interests include human-machine interactions and user engagement healthcare applications, smart information systems, social robots, and so on, and so on. So, hello, welcome, um, Wolfgang, nice to see you here. And then I have two uh, companions from Latvia. Uh, Ilze Zaharane. Hello, Ilze, how are you? Hello, today? nice to be here, thank you. Uh, Ilze is the founder of Cheeks Up, um, and also a certified speech and language therapist. She has a private practice in this field. Um, and Cheeks Up is a computer game for speech therapy homework. Um, she's been experimenting a lot with 3D cameras, uh, with facial recognition programs. And um, I suppose Cheeks Up is directly uh, connected to welfare technologies, right? Yes, yes, definitely. Okay. And then, last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, we have Janis Jatnieks. Um, again, I forgot, how is it correct? Baltic 3D. It's Baltic 3D, yes. Baltic 3D, yeah. There, I have two different spellings of the, of the company's name. Baltic 3D, uh, Janis uh, is uh, founder and chief executive officer of Baltic 3D. Uh, he's been working with addit additive manufacturing since 2013. And um, also, Baltic 3D has a sister company named AM Craft, and you're employed by that company too, and also are you a co-founder of the company, right? And uh, Janis is the one who has created one of the biggest industrial 3D printing centers in Europe. And they are focusing on manufacturing items, not only for uh, healthcare and welfare sector, but also for space technologies and uh, many uh, more fields. So, as I said at the very beginning, welfare technologies, how could we define it? What it is exactly? Uh, Maybe, uh, Wolfgang, you could, you could explain it to us. Let's start with you. 
yeah, I think uh, healthcare technology or healthcare and welfare technology is, is a difficult uh, <laughs> uh, subject. But um, I think it's technologies that make life better. So in all ways, and uh, also technology that helps people to, uh, to to be successful in their lives and to have a have a good life. Technologies that make life better. Could you could you give an example or a couple of examples? Yeah, I, I could do so. So it, it, we can start with health. For example, when we start with health, we can um, uh, have just, just okay. Just uh, for example, uh, um, having uh, self-managed uh, data collection. For example, say you have a, a chronic disease that you uh, have to administer somehow. And uh, this chronic disease, uh, you, you have to go often to the, to, the, to the clinic. And instead of doing so, you can do that at home in your place. So creating technologies that would uh, enable you to uh, self-manage your disease would, uh, would be an, uh, yeah, a, a good technology that helps you. Other examples would be, um, say you have, um, People with uh, special needs, say elderly, in a in a at their home, or in a, um, in a healthcare facility. Uh, quite often, these elderly people they they are malnutritioned because they um, yeah that's how age is, and um, sometimes it is enough to inspire these people to eat healthily so that they uh, get new inspiration and just uh, create technology like an, an app or something that they would need, that would use and uh, maybe use uh, together with their friends that would inspire them to eat more healthily. Or technologies for, for the blind people, for example, to be able to navigate. So I will give an example afterwards how uh, this is a project we have uh, uh, with a Bulgarian company at the moment, financed by the EEA grants. Mm -hmm. Okay, you will return to that later. Thank, thank yeah. you. Uh, uh, Janis, I see that you have brought some practical stuff with you. And uh, if I ask you, how is your uh, daily work uh, connected to welfare technologies? That is a good question, first of all. Hello, everyone. Um, as yours already introduced, we are working more with the manufacturing side of things, so tangible products, uh, products that can be worn or used to, to help somebody to go about their lives. Uh, here's a good example of uh, a prosthetic leg cover. Uh, as you can see, it has some, uh, some design elements on it that actually make it more attractive. But um, the, the basic use case for something like this, which is a prosthetic cover, would be that, uh, as you would see in, inside of it, there is a, there's a metal pipe. And usually for prosthetics uh, wearers, this, this is the only thing that they get, right? So they get uh, a foot on a pipe, and that's how they need to use it. So this prosthetic cover helps them to, to regain some of the aesthetics of a leg. It also helps uh, women to wear their tights uh, and, and to have similar shapes on both legs. For example, as in this case for the patient, we actually 3D scanned the, the, the healthy leg and made a mirror image for, for the prosthetic cover to, to replicate that. And that was made specifically before the wedding so she could wear her white tights and, um, and, and be on the wedding. Similarly, what, what we do is different other kinds of, um, of orthotics and prosthetics that are produced by 3D printing. And why by 3D printing is because we can take the actual um, anatomic data of a person by 3D scanning the person and then making a 3D model of that particular device that they're going to wear and, and shape it around their anatomy, right? And that at the end of the day, they get an exactly fitting product that helps them to go about their lives and to come back to your original question, so welfare technologies is definitely something that, that helps the person to be included in the society, something that helps them to monitor their health. We have um, experimented with sensors that are IoT ready and that would tell the doctor or the rehab specialist whether the patient is wearing the device, how often they're wearing it, whether they're wearing it um, correctly, uh, meaning not extending the, the limb or, or some other way of measurement, right? 
So it all comes down to how, how well they can follow up with the usage of the product. And for example, in this case, uh, uh, during winter time, uh, this patient actually put in LED Christmas lights in the leg, and then she suddenly had a topic uh, that uh, uh, she had a thing that increased her uh, communication with the rest of the people in the society. She was uh, approached by people asking what it is, and then uh, she could explain and uh, talk about it. So she felt better about crying. So it brings some some fun also to oh definitely to to, to, to the process. Okay, thank you. Um, well, Ilza, yeah. What about yeah. your uh, uh, your, your business and the things you are doing? Uh, um, I'm definitely in the welfare. Uh, that's sure, uh, because uh, with the technology, what we are doing is that uh, we're allowing uh, families to substitute part of the therapy uh, sessions, doing that at home. Uh, and the biggest magic is actually not the 3D facial recognition, what we've been uh, developing, but it was kind of kind of big challenge to deploy that with small children who move all around. They cannot sit still. So mechanics go kind of nuts. Uh, all the algorithms, uh, when they move the head in many directions, they can't sit still. Uh, but we're, what we're doing is, um, I do voice recordings, and uh, together with the gamification elements, we automate like the therapy uh, plan. Uh, and in my case, the, the, the magic sauce is that it's very engaging for small children. Uh, I make it um, kind of fun, uh, engaging with a lot of intonations, and uh, so, so, so children repeat that. And uh, in this case, it's, um, I was kind of solving my own problem I was having um, problems with vocal cords, and uh, you know I can't help all children who need therapy, but I can automate automate part of my job, and that's what we're doing with Cheeks Up. So I automate my part, and uh, parents do that at home with children, and we're kind of a better team together. I see. Thank you. Uh, well, yeah. Dear audience, uh, I must admit it's a little problematic here for me to, I must listen very, very carefully to uh, my discussion companions because they are wearing masks and the acoustics here in this room is so that it's sometimes, uh, it, it sounds a little strange to my ears. I really hope that you have no problems with understanding that, I was that trying to be louder. It's not your fault at all, believe me. So unfortunately, we are all under the circumstances of uh, pan pandemic uh, still. I would like to remind the audience that you are highly welcome to ask questions or uh, post your comments. And uh, if you want me as a moderator to ask the question, uh, to our speakers, then please don't forget to check that little box here. Ask your question via uh, moderator. I'm, uh, you are really, really welcome uh, to do so. And also let me remind you that uh, those of you who will be the most active will also be awarded by Deep Tech Atelier with some very, very uh, tasty prizes at the end of the, uh, of the conference. Returning to our topic, uh, we in here in Latvia, we would like to think that uh, we belong to the Nordic countries and we will be soon on the same level of uh, economical development as the Nordic countries. It might sound maybe a little fantastic for us, but what about welfare technologies in uh, Norway and in Latvia? Is there any difference at the moment? Uh, have you been in, in Latvia, Wolfgang, so far? Unfortunately, not yet. So, uh, um, I'm, I'm not, not sure if there, there might be different markets. Um, what I can see, for example, with the welfare technologies difference between uh, when I look at the project in Bulgaria. So, um, the, the market is a little bit different because in Norway, uh, the welfare system they can afford uh, devices that would be not affordable for people in Bulgaria, for example. So uh, quite often, it, um, uh, yeah, 
one needs to make the, uh, the devices and the technology more uh, available for people, for, uh, for all people. So this would be uh, one idea. So uh, that um, uh, yeah, one one one, one makes um, things more available at the right price uh, or the right costs for the people using that. On the other hand, also okay, maybe in, in Norway things um, development of things is uh, to make things a little bit cooler. Um, while maybe in other countries it might be to make the, the devices more for everybody. So th that might be some differences. So uh, I think that uh, Scandinavian countries are really famous for being a very, very uh, inclusive ones. Inclusive in the sense that the society does everything that's possible to to, to make life better for all the members of the society. Uh, here in Latvia, we would like to think that we are uh, having the same mindset, but uh, th there's a lot of things to be improved, right? What do you yes. think? Yes, definitely. Uh, I can recall uh, uh, one uh, event, what was e-health event in, uh, in Norway. Uh, sorry, not in Norway, in uh, Sweden. And uh, definitely, I could feel the difference here and, and over there how people are using more digital tools, remote uh, telepractice, remote consultations with doctors, a a diff uh, many different tools would help them to actually diagnose or screen for some, uh, do screening for some uh, diseases that uh, we have to catch up, I would say. Yeah, Anis, what do you think? Um. I, I definitely know that there are some issues with inclusiveness because uh, having worked with prosthetics and orthotics and, and the patients that use them uh, and, and with the local system, we definitely know that there are quite a few patients that when they get the traditional prosthetic or orthotic, they're actually not using it. And uh, I remember from one of the studies that one of the reasons why they're not using it because they're afraid of whether the society is going to accept them using this prosthetic or orthotic, right? Um, and, and I definitely believe that making these, these devices more uh, aesthetically pleasing and uh, more custom made for the patient could help with this. And uh, uh, there is still a long way to go. Um, and, and one of our goals when helping our, our clients and patients is definitely to make sure that after we have produced this device, they're actually using it. And I think we can uh, always improve on that. Uh. What about the state's contribution to welfare technologies and to enterprises which are working in that field? Uh, what do you think? How is the situation in, uh, in Latvia? And maybe you can compare it with Scandinavian countries like Norway. Um, I guess. Uh, you well, know, if, it, I, if, it, I, if, it I, if I'm asked directly, has your company uh, got any let's say, support from, 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 from the state? Uh, you know, you, you mean from Latvia? Yes, yes. In, in, in my case. Like business um, incubators or... Incubators, like yes, you know, but that's a, it's not that kind of amount of support that you need for uh, developing uh, high-level technology. It's more like uh, everyday operational business needs that you need to cover. That kind of support, yes. Uh, uh, investment agency is uh, quite good in Latvia. Uh, but then, um, as from grants uh, or some kind of projects, it's more like European level. We have received some uh, um, European fund uh, support and as well a grant from uh, Dubai Expo Live. Uh, in the project where they supported uh, uh, impact-driven uh, startups. So um, I've been, yeah, we've been, uh, in my case, in Cheeks Up case, it's uh, kind of funny that we developed a tool for Latvian-speaking children with the money from Dubai, from United Arab Emirates. Uh, but uh, no, we haven't, like, s yeah, that, the big money didn't came from Latvia. I see. And uh, in the case of Baltic 3D? Um, yeah, Baltic 3D has been very actively uh, 
fun uh, looking for funding that comes from the government. Uh, as a matter of fact, Baldock 3D has received a, a grant from the, the Norway financial mechanism as well, and that has definitely helped us also to look towards uh, you know developing products like these welfare technology uh, related products, uh, prosthetics, or orthotics. And I can right away tell you why because. I mean, if we didn't have the government support, we would need to concentrate more on commercial products, right? And we would have less time thinking about products that have higher social impact. And, and having that, that, that government support uh, has definitely helped us to broaden the, the product groups that we uh, provide to the clients. Okay, Wolfgang, and how, how is it in Norway, the state support yeah. towards enterprises dealing with those technologies yeah i think there are several uh, uh instruments to fund uh, such technology and i think also it's very important that these are funded so that the uh, organizations or companies can try out things that they wouldn't be able to try out without uh, government funding so in, in norway there's the research council and uh, there is the uh, innovation norway uh, which funds uh, companies and ideas from companies, and then, of course, the uh, European mechanisms are also in place there. So, um, um, yeah, I think it, it's quite important. So without uh, <laughs> this type of funding, one couldn't try out things and uh, maybe also try crazy things that uh, one, one wouldn't uh, do without such funding. Well, uh, this might sound a little stupid, maybe, the, my question, but... Uh, uh, Norway grants, so the government of Norway is uh, offering support to uh, small and medium companies all over Europe, right? Or let's, let's say in this case, um, in Latvia, uh, in the field of, uh, of welfare technologies. Uh, as to my mind, the first thing that comes up is, uh, well, you are creating competitors to Norwegian companies in that way, more or less. Am I right or am I completely wrong? Or uh, is this creating more like uh, partners or... Uh, so what's, what, what's the big deal? What's the, what's the point? Who could explain uh, me that? Wolfgang, maybe I you. Can, I can try, yeah. So uh, I don't think that this is... Uh, no, we don't have competitors, and I think it's very important that uh, one works together on things. For example, uh, this uh, uh, this um, device that's for the blind people that is developed in Bulgaria, there will be definitely uh, also a Norwegian market. And in this uh, project, also a Norwegian company is there who are uh, then uh, trying to sell this product uh, in the Norwegian market even though it's uh, originally designed for the Bulgarian market. So uh, I think there is a, there is a, um, a synergy that uh, allows us then to uh, develop things uh, for both markets and uh, also include the requirements from both markets into uh, the development. I think it's very important. So, um, yeah, to, to, to make things that uh, work for people uh, and it's not important in which country it's it's done, and uh, this opens up both uh, kind of uh, uh, both research and production in all, uh, all countries. So when you have the EEA um, mechanism, you uh, need to include uh, a partner from uh, the EEA countries. Uh huh. So that's that's quite a. Nice opportunity for everybody, uh, as far as I see that. Could, could you comment on that? Have you any experience with uh, Norway grants or similar financial instruments? Uh, as I mentioned, Baltic 3D has received um, support from Norway grants uh, in the past. Uh, I think it was year 2016, uh, the first time we received some funding. Uh, we had a very successful cooperation with the uh, Norwegian Paper Fiber Institute. Uh, where we worked on, on new uh, materials where, where, which could be used for 3D printing, right? But uh, what I wanted to comment on is, uh, on is I definitely agree with Wolfgang. If, if there is a product that's going to be developed for, uh, for society's welfare, 
it's more likely that it's going to be used beyond the borders of one single country, right? And especially as we come to talk about digital products, uh, we have experimented with something that we call virtual prosthetics clinic which would basically mean that any person who would need a 3D printed prosthetic or orthotic could 3D scan their limb, send us, uh, and, and they could do it anywhere in the world, send us the 3D scan file. Our specialist on the platform prepares the 3D model for, for the prosthetic and sends it back to the closest 3D printer to the patient. So essentially, there is no actual need for the patient to travel as well. So I, I, would, uh, I would assume that these sort of funding uh, regimes and funding, uh, funding uh, support is definitely going to help us to bring new products into the picture. And I would definitely suggest anybody looking towards welfare technologies to apply to these grants, because that's either going to speed up their process or going to allow them to widen the approach that they're you, you know, planning for right now. I'm looking up the questions from the audience and at the present moment there are no questions from the audience okay uh, Ilse, if I uh, can any experience with uh, Norway grants or similar um, uh, no not yet but I'm uh, really looking forward to this uh, and I can only agree uh, to the points mentioned before that it's very important and um, and one of the points why the, the government support and grant kind of support is very important is because we are, uh, welfare technology is not so interesting for uh, private investors or venture funds. So um, our, all the technology, it needs money, enough money. Uh, and um, the support is very important because the money does not come back so fast as it would be, you know, in kind of a fintech company, uh, some, someone who's doing kind of a quick product in I, uh, IT field, but um, commenting about the language <laughs> that somewhere developed product can be uh, deployed in every country, uh, here comes my next challenge, that uh, in my case, the language is also uh, important, and we have to... Adapt. That was my next question, actually. You're dealing with uh, uh, applications that are designed for, uh, for, for Latvian-speaking children, right? Yeah, there, are, there, 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 there is this, not issue, but it's language specific. Um, even though tongue movements are kind of the same, but in every language, uh, our um, uh, speech apparatus, it kind of adapts to, to the sounds that every language has. And there are many nuances. And you know, all the devil is in the details. So it's important to, uh, to really adapt the product for the local languages. But the platform uh, can be used right now in any uh, language. Uh, if I have a speech therapist who speaks that language, uh, because uh, yeah, we have um, a tool where you record the sounds, all the exercises that you need to do for the kid, and um, it makes the voice funny, like a bunny voice, and um, you add um, exercises, what kind of tongue movements, lip positions uh, you need, and you combine the therapy plan, and here we go. So if you have, if um, if I would have a speech therapist who speaks uh, uh, Norway language, then I could help a kid in Norway as well. Uh -huh. So, actually, ev ev everyone uh, would benefit from that kind of collaboration, yeah. independent <laughs> from the fact if you're located in Latvia, Estonia, Nor Norway, or, or Sweden, or where wherever else. Well, you know, dear friends, we've got one and a half minutes left, uh, Wolfgang. Uh, maybe very quickly, would you add something? Have I forgotten to ask you something very, very important, maybe? <laughs> uh, I think it's a very complex subject. <laughs> it's probably always something there. I think this uh, kind of uh, international cooperation uh, is an important thing, and also especially for um, welfare, produce products that uh, work in several markets. And uh, there are differences between these markets. We need to address that. Thank you. So, Jani, Ilse, anything to add? 
Uh, I echo that as a last comment that, uh, as I said, I definitely encourage anybody to apply for this funding. Um, and, and I'm happy to help with answering some questions if any, anybody has them, because we've gone through the process a couple of times. And, and our company would definitely not be where it is right now if we didn't have the support from the governments and from the Nor Norway grants. Perfect. Thank you. So you have your first client here. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a chat. I should remind the audience uh, once more that you have a unique opportunity right now to visit the Norwegian Financial Mechanism Expo stand right here in the platform that we are using and you, you are able then to obtain any kinds of consultations right now. Thank you. Thank you, Wolfgang. Thank you, Janis Ilse. Thank, Thank you, you very much.